morning, boys. It's going to get up to 60 today. It's in the 30s right now. And Don's pulling jewels out for me because Ruby's clean and the roads are wet. Totally don't want to get Ruby dirty this morning. I feel like I need more power this morning. Boy, is it a Monday morning times two. Here's our tux man. He's doing good. We got lights on the bridge. We got a foolish moon up there. And we got a happy panther kitty and his chicken. It is supposed to be dry all day, so for the afternoon run, I can probably take Ruby. Don did charge Jules up for me last night. Well, I'm definitely glad to see that sun in the sky this morning. And the roads are definitely still wet. But drying quickly. Well, Jules has blue flashed me three times this morning. I was trying to think if that's more or less. You know, in Ruby, it's a white flash. Um, it's probably about the same. You know, my hand's on the wheel, but the car does such a good job of lane centering now that there's not a lot of reason to put a lot of tension when you're on a straight stretch. And, um, but both cars respond pretty quick to a little extra wiggle. Don't go down the strike path, so that's good. It's pretty amazing the, how similar the two cars do drive, even though they're three years apart and a different model. They really do do quite a good bit the same thing at the same location in the same way. When you think about it like that, it's pretty amazing. One thing I was noticing this morning is there sure is a lot of copyright level version information in the lower right hand corner of the map. And of course on the Y, on the Y that's actually a fairly sizable part of the screen when you have uh, directions up. So I don't know, it is 2023 current. I must have had a recent map update. I hadn't really... Oh, thank you, Jules, for getting me out of this lane that I didn't really want to get out of. 45 degrees and 722 arrival across town at the school. So, we're not doing too bad this morning. It shouldn't be... Uh, it doesn't look windy today. So, it should be okay for our walk, too. here at St. Monica's just getting ready to take off to the house. Um, I was reading about what Elon said on Twitter about V11's release and um, yeah I think they were pretty fair with the treatment there. It was supposed to come out around Thanksgiving then was going to take a couple more weeks and here we are it's February and it's not out yet. On the other hand obviously um, I'm sure it's as big a change as Elon said it is, and I'm sure they don't want to release it if it's really not ready to release to a lot more people than the beta program used to be. So I patiently wait with enthusiastic excitement. I think, you know, several of uh, us and our friend conversations have had, you know, this merging of the highway stack, it's got to be right. You can't. The highway stack is so good right now. If you mess that up, if it becomes more troubled, like the inner city uh, uh, stuff, that wouldn't be a good thing. So waiting, getting it right, it, it is really super important. So I, I look, I appreciate how hard it is to know exactly how long something is going to take and the uh, complexities of it. I suppose Elon could be a tad more careful about um, what he says, how long things are gonna are gonna take, but he can only tell us his best understanding at the time that he makes the statement, right? Except for you know, most of us are reasonable and we get that, and some people out there use it against him and aren't very reasonable about it. So, but we will eventually get it. I'm sure that's true, and I don't know if it'll really start rolling out at the end of this week or not. If it's really ready, I hope so. 
and if it's not I hope they keep working on it until it's really ready yeah the map data says it's 2022.28-14046 I'll have to see if Ruby's at the same level um obviously it says it's up to date and like I said in the lower right hand corner it even it says 2023 so it's got to be pretty darn current be interesting to see if it would navigate correctly through that new interstate in Durham now. Yeah, I confirmed with my friend Ben, who lives in the Durham area, that uh, I-885, old NC-147, it's still not showing up right. My feeling when I went up to the hospital last week that navigation still couldn't handle it. He's seeing the same thing in his car. Um, it's kind of half there now. It's not as bad as it was originally. You can kind of see the road on the map, and I agree that's what I saw. But then navigation totally doesn't understand putting you on that road and using that road to get you from one side of town to the other. So we can just only help that another future map release and soon will fix that. Maybe by the next time I go to the oncologist for my... Um, doctor's appointment in July, my next follow-up checkup, my mammograms in July too. Maybe it will correctly be able to navigate me to the hospital. We'll shoot for that. <laughs> that would be, a, and, you know, another, another uh, five, six months that should be sufficient, one would think. I mean, I get it that they can't, um, they don't want cars running off into the water or, you know, through dead end signs or I, but this is like a major interstate highway this is not a little tiny small town road change this is a huge <laughs> big city interstate road change so um you know i'm sure there's a reason why it takes so darn long i just i would love an update not just from the autopilot people and the ai developers and stuff at tesla but i'd love an update on what it takes <laughs> to get map changes into the into the cars you know what what's the cycle time on that and why is it as long as it is and could they not understand the inconvenience the first world problem that it is that you know navigation is not working better for this new road up in durham um so anyway <laughs> and just brought up a key point just wait until i540 starts to open up um, the you know construction zones I'm passing through all the time down in my neck of the woods the cars aren't going to know what to do with that probably for six months for for a while that's going to be really annoying you guys might remember when the Judd Parkway loop opened up in Fuquay we took that for months and it thought we were in a field yep on the trail again I just can't wait to be on the trail again at least it's pretty nice out here this morning. The birds are chirping. The sunshine and the clean air has a little promise of spring not being too far around the corner. I'll take it. So Don's going to give us a brief update on our electric bill. I think we meant to do this a couple of weeks ago and didn't. But he was actually studying it this morning and has... Right, we got our bill last week and it was over $300, it's $301 and change. And that's the all-time uh, dollar amount for our bill. And I looked, it was not the record kilowatt hours. Uh, the record kilowatt hours by 7 kilowatts was 2,307 kilowatts and it was 2,300 kilowatts in December. So. Uh, our bill was actually more than it was back in August. So I said, well, they must have changed the rates. And sure enough, I went and looked. And obviously, they changed the rates. And we're now paying 24.99 cents per kilowatt hour on peak without, um, not including taxes. With taxes, it's uh, like 25.8. 7% tax. 7% yeah, tax, sales tax. And then, but the big thing is our off peak has gone up. Uh, we're paying uh, eight, I think like eight point, what was it, eight, eight point three cents a kilowatt hour now off peak. 
And so with, uh, well, let's just say it differently. With taxes and everything, it's 9.3 cents a kilowatt now. So if you want to figure out what Ruby costs to charge, is you, including tax, it's 9.3 cents a kilowatt hour. So that's, uh, you know, that's up a penny. Right, to put it in perspective, when we got Ruby, it was 7 and 22 after we turned on right. time of use dash R, which was about six to nine months into having Ruby. It wasn't too much after, but it wasn't like the day of, or was it? No, it was like two months, because it took them off. A little bit to do it. To do the, get the meter out here, right. Right, so I guess this means prompt, prompt. We need to update Tesla Fi, and we need to update the Tesla app to tell them what our current energy cost is, because those savings averages they give us, et cetera, yeah. are only as good as us giving them accurate information about the current pricing. Right, well, and it's not, I need to be clear, you know, nine cents, 9.3 cents, whatever, that's, I realize how that's inexpensive. Right. It's just, it may be inexpensive relative to other people, but it's still going up. Right. And up and up. Of course, I guess you could say everything's going up, but. Uh, so Don, a couple of other notes. Um, Don continues to report that the shoulder rate is not listed on the bill. They have consistently failed to list the shoulder rate. You have to do some serious math yeah, you gotta to figure it out. You gotta, you gotta take the other two and subtract from the total to figure out what it is, yes. Um, and also that uh, Don has put a way back machine yeah query on the rates page because there's no history of what the rates were that right. Duke will allow you to see and he'd like to know. Right. So I did that. I put it in the Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine accepted it so we'll see. And then the other thing I did is I set up a Google alert on the they use the character string TOU dash R dash 77 is the current one. So we're on the 77th rate paper so I put put that in there because what happens is they I have found out they're not sequential they must have rates that they they don't issue or whatever but down at the bottom of the one that does get issued it says it supersedes in this case the active one is 77 so it says it supersedes that one so that string will the will hit, hit should hit, hit should hit so when that happens, then I can go out to the Wayback Machine and check. And plus I can go download the, the document itself. I had several of them, but I was missing a couple of them. And that's how come I noticed that they don't, they're not exactly, they, they skip a couple. Because a couple of the ones, like I, 75, 72 was the one before that. So there wasn't like a 74 or something. It, it, it. So anyway, the point is, they're tricky, and they don't—they're trying, and they don't make it easy for you to figure. They don't really want you to know what you're paying. They, you know, which is, and in some respects, I don't understand why that. Because most people just hit the roof when they see the bill for $300 or 400. You know, it's the sheer dollar amount, not the rate. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm sure you asked the number of the average person, how many kilowatt hours did you use last month? They couldn't tell you. Yep. So uh, I, I couldn't have told you back in the day because I used to pay $300 bills at my old house. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 400 more square feet with that room up over the garage and two heat pumps instead of one. But still, but still. Right. So it's, uh, you know, most people would kill to have their combined gasoline bill, their what they pay for putting in their vehicle. And their house. And their house, and it only cost them 300 bucks. I'm sure people are paying 300 bucks a month in gas yep. for gasoline. Uh, I don't know that, but I, I think it's possible. Right, so this is more a comment, not that we feel like we're paying so much an unreasonable amount, but Duke's lack of visibility on some of the rate changes. Yeah, I told Don, it's nice you set back the way back machine, but if they don't want you to know, they'll just change the URL. Right. And that's why he set up the Google search to catch them trying to change the URL. 
Right. I think the, I'm very confident. I had I've been using Google Alerts for years to catch stuff. Uh, I hate to even say it. That's how I found out about Jack's passing. Was I had put a I knew he wasn't looking good, and so I set up a Google Alert on his, his name, name. Yeah. Cape Gerardo. And sure enough, it popped up. And uh, anyway, uh, you also should set up a little Google alert on your oh. email address and a few other things. It's, it's, a, it's one of the things for your internet privacy you should do. Well, at least for uh, not getting um, somebody stealing your identity. Right. I don't know, you can keep yourself private too much, but you well, can know if somebody's misusing yeah. your name or email or something. Right. Don's planning on doing a hit today. So I will be taking his 20 pounds on my shoulder up this hill and doing my own hit. Yeah, really. Come lay it on me. <laughs> yeah, I think you're going to have plenty of exercise there, girl. Yep. You do good, Donnie. All right, so now I've got 30 pounds total up this hill. You know, I don't have to break any speed records, and if I feel like stopping halfway up, I can always do that too. I ain't gonna do that, but you know. My chiropractor, Dr. Greg, he posted a thing yesterday. It's not just about strength. You need to be able to run a mile without stopping, and you need to be breathing through your nose and not your mouth. And let me tell you, I did that mile once this last year, but I certainly was breathing through my mouth. I am nowhere near conditioned to not be breathing through my mouth. I understand why that's important. I really do. For overall lower heart rate, less stress, that's good. That's, that is certainly better conditioning, but, huh. well, I don't try to run anymore because it just got to be feeling like it was too much. And I'd rather be out here than not out here. And uh, then my knee started hurting me. It's probably, I, you know, injuries really worry me. So I'd rather walk and not be injured than run and trip and be out for a while. That would really upset me. <sighs> Hey, but I'm still talking going up the hill with 30 pounds of extra weight and my heart rate at 156 so it's a clear 10 beats per minute higher I made it up the hill okay car passing me there's really an arrow here that this side is out and the other side is in and the problem is is that only 60% of the people know about the arrows and figure out which way they should come and go <laughs> I have emailed the town asking them to please repaint the arrows and put up a visible proper sign stating that it's one way, but not a priority, I guess. Although I would have to say that I really think that's a pretty inexpensive fix there. Maybe they'll circle around to it. Yeah, I figured out that the rattling in jewels this morning is definitely the hat rack on the ceiling on the glass roof and I need to study it and see if I can do anything to alleviate it. Don and I decided that I offered. I'll just stay in Jules today. Jules has plenty of range. Jules has got 155 miles. Don had charged up to I think 80% or something like 70 or 80% last night. So I have plenty. Um, that way the roads will be really all the puddles gone. Don wants to pull Ruby out and um, do the black detailing and hopefully we're really not going to get any rain for four or five days and I can enjoy her being all pretty and I'll take off with her tomorrow. It's good for Jules to get driven sometimes and I, I really don't mind Jules. If she would open and close my doors I wouldn't gripe about any of the other differences. That's that's because um my hands are full when I get frustrated getting in. And then um, the brake pedal not closing the door means I have to lean out farther than is comfortable. So I just, you know, that feature really means a lot to me. I understand it might not mean a lot to everybody, but for me, it, it, it does. 
the other things you know there's just little differences here and there but um the y is a really great vehicle too i keep looking up for the hawks hopefully it'll dry out this week and don and i'll have a few minutes where we're not dead busy doing something and we can just kind of casually walk in the woods and look for the nest because i really do have a limited amount of time before the trees start to leaf out and then i have to worry about poison ivy and other stuff in the woods that you don't have to worry about in the winter <laughs> at least not as much it's pretty yesterday i worked on my building a little bit but not that much and then it got really late and the time lapse was missing from the daily folder and i never sh came back to shoot the video about it or anything so maybe i'll insert the time lapse and then um i'll just talk about it for a minute that this basically is going up here and uh, there's some lower stuff getting built in the windows that are in this bowl but waiting on parts and i need to build the window piece for the other side and there's like a table and chairs and some wall dividers that go up there so i'm going to work on it i've got um just under an hour and a half before i go pick up johnny i know two bags of legos are coming today hopefully three bags are coming because I really need a couple of pieces and I need the bag that comes to be the bag that has those pieces. <laughs> Marty never wants to come inside. Aww. Aww. I got the second um, set of stairs put in and this window topper here and then on this side the window topper and you know the wall here and here is put on there's a picture that goes there which is on the way um, hopefully the parts come so I can insert the windows that would be awesome um, I didn't do the rest of the detail work inside, so I'll either start on the windows or start on the detail work when I get a chance to work on it some more, which is probably later this afternoon. I no longer think it's Don's hat that's making the vibration noise. I think it's this rear seat belt again. If these seat belts are not exactly in the right spot, like this, this is bad. See this up here is hitting on that. If that happens, then you get all of this noise that you don't want. I don't know. That should be pretty good like that. Because whatever's rattling is at the point where I can't take it. And there isn't anything in this door pocket except for, I don't know, a piece of a french fry. That's kind of weird. <laughs> so let's see if that fixes the rattling. Although while I'm here and I'm stopped, we probably should just look at the one on this side too. I think when they're like right there like that, they're in the least possible vibration spot. And there's nothing else back there on the floor that's vibrating. Can't swear there's nothing in the back, but I doubt it. Let's give this a try. Because I don't think I can take it rattling all the way to downtown and back again. Securing the seat belts definitely took care of 90% of the noise. Much, much better not the first time the seat belts haven't been laid back correctly and made noise in the Y. It's just it's really small in between there and it's really easy for the metal seat belt plate the catch thing to uh, start beating against the back of the seat 
or the pillar itself and making noise. So what will happen is, is we don't have somebody back there very often. And then when we do, we don't think about it. And, and, re and honestly, the right answer is, is when the person gets out of the car, however the seatbelt is, is good. The person shouldn't have to be standing there adjusting the seatbelt, right, in a perfect world. So I guess when Johnny got out Saturday, it didn't really put itself back where it should be. But um, I don't fault him for that. And um, it's fixed now anyway. Glad to resolve it. Because boy, was it rattling this morning. <sighs> this is such a long wait sometimes. I don't know that a light will fix all of the concerns, but... I probably would be willing to try a light at this point. It is 62 out there and I am making good time on this bright sunny afternoon back downtown to get Johnny. I see Don has Ruby pulled out to finish all the tire black and stuff. The roads of course are pretty dry now. Um, but um, down by the house on the curve and all the guys have been going in and out with um, dump trucks full of gravel and dirt not the church construction but where the tractor trailers are parked by the bridge that homestead in there we're not sure exactly what they're doing except maybe they're making room to park more tractor trailers I'm not totally sure they went in with some big cement culverts this morning we wondered about what permit they might have obtained from the town to be messing around down there near the waterway near the creek but hopefully it's all up to standard and uh, they'll be done soon in the meantime I need to remember to cut through the neighborhood and avoid the mess on the road oh wow they're taking out one of the really big trees I'm going to assume they're going to say it was unhealthy and a fret, but it sure looks plenty stable over there to me. I've got Johnny now, and we're headed back out of the city. An exceptionally pleasant 62 degrees. Well, there's Donnie in my very pretty car. I just saw her move her forward. Hey, Donnie. I just saw you move Ruby forward a little bit. Yeah. Uh, let's get uh, tools in the garage. Okay. Actually, the British actually the sided with the Arabs in the Israeli War of Independence. Okay. She just looks so good. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I did a lot of little things today. It looks brand new. Yeah. Yeah. We were checking tire tread. Yeah. We're definitely not in trouble with Jules in the rear yeah which and is pretty impressive i've got twenty thousand miles on yeah tires yeah they, they should go 25 easy yeah they the 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 wear mark is well below yeah yeah how about ruby well ruby is um you know ruby is ruby <laughs> let me feel <laughs> uh the tread wear thing is even with the tire on the inside on the outside there's just a little bit <laughs> Well, you know what, though? No, there, no, you, But you know what? You don't want to have to replace them both in the same month. Why is that? Because that's like double the money in one <laughs> month. You want to stagger the replacement. So Ruby first, and then Jules hold oh, on. Oh, the two cars. Right, yes, the two yes, cars. Yes. Yeah, you want Ruby and Jules not in the same month. No, I do not want to right, spend my so, month in the tire shop. Exactly, right. yeah. Don's getting vitamin D. It's that warm out here. I uh, vacuumed Jules and put both cars away and swept out and blew out the garage and the parking pad. And Don's going to work on his electronics. And my buddy has come over for a little bit more TLC. You're not in the sun anymore. You'd have to move your table. It's <laughs> <This is> true. <laughs> How's it going? It ain't going all right. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, I had... You know, I have all this stuff. Dragging it out. I understand. Get to play with your tools today. That's right. Get to play with my tools. I'm stopping so the guys can get something to eat. <laughs> We're having leftovers tonight because we got ribs and 
pork Boston butt and prime rib and ice cream and cheese. And we got lots of leftovers. We're having leftover night. But anyway, I've really been working here. Um, and it's coming along nicely. There's a little guy in his office in there now. See if I can get it to where you can see him. Maybe, maybe not. There he is. You can um, kind of see him in through the door also, which does open. And there he is. He's just at his desk in there. At his computer station. So there's more toppers that goes on here. And then... Um, There's a table and chairs that go here, and there's like a little, there's a photocopier machine. <laughs> I'll have to show that to Mark Simlo when I get it built, since he used to work on repairing copiers. And, um, you know, just a few other things in here. So, I'm uh, there's more, pe more parts to do. I'm not done. Plus, I'm sort of holding off doing the topper part until I get the stuff I'm waiting on for here because I'm going to have to insert those windows and I'm going to basically have to pull this off in order to put the windows in and then put it back down. So if I put the topper on it, I just have to probably take the topper off. So anyway, it's coming along nice. I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's coming. there a uh, very very prototype weapon blade for a fairy weight robot that's a fun the robot will be 150 grams this will be 40 grams and uh, how did you tell us about how you built it made it came up with um, it I designed it in fusion 360 and then put it on a thumb stick and took it to a, uh, the CR the reality CR 10 free printer we have in the attic right the one mr. David brought out and gave to you after a failed trial one, um, I got some help from a friend and got printed. That, so that's the first successful project on that printer thing that you sent it to print that we got it to. Yep. Way cool. I'm so excited. He's very excited too. <laughs> He's working. You're working toward building your own robot for competition, right? That's the goal. You can put a picture of the cat I sent you on Google Hangouts if you'd like. Oh yeah, sure. I'm sure the guys would love to see that. I'll do that. Thanks, Johnny. Is that also is a very prototype though. Right, but so it's... basically, you'll see this design, it's on a hub. It'll be on a, on the, what it's on is a hub motor, and it'll, you know, just spin. So. Way cool. I'm super excited.